Lesson 12 The Lord's Prayer Objectives At the end of the session, the student will be able to recall the Lord's Prayer, who first taught it, what language, to dissect the Lord's Prayer into parts according to what the prayer reveals, to define consumerism, and to identify some skills to practice to avoid consumerism. Review In the last several sessions, we studied the commandments as the guide for our conscience to lead us to our goal in life, to be perfectly happy forever in heaven. We also learned the value of avoiding what will ruin our relationships with God and with others. This week, we will learn the Lord's Prayer, a prayer that Jesus taught to help us communicate best with God. Recall when you first learned the Lord's Prayer. Who taught you this prayer? What language did you learn this prayer? Who taught you this prayer? In most practicing Catholic families, this prayer is often learned from parents, siblings, grandparents, or other family members. Not surprisingly, this prayer may also be taught in private religion schools. Language first learned this prayer. While the Our Father is commonly prayed in English, it has translations in so many languages. If you learned in another language, it showed that people communicate with God in the language they are comfortable using. The Lord's Prayer as a Blueprint a blueprint is what the architects use to map out essential aspects of a project. It sets the boundaries, the directions, and the details that will lead to the completion of a project. The Lord's Prayer is a prayer that Jesus taught his followers to be like a blueprint in building their lives so it ends up in perfect happiness with the Father in heaven. In the conscience, we form the boundaries between good and evil, the directions to take for a happy relation with God. In teaching this prayer, Jesus gave us the summary of the whole gospel according to the Christian writer Tertullian, circa 160 to 225. On earth when Jesus lived, the incarnate word had an intimate relationship with the Father, the Almighty Creator. In teaching the Lord's Prayer to his followers, Jesus allowed us to take to partake of his intimate relationship with God and he shared with us in a nutshell all that he had taught in the gospels The Lord's prayer is part of the Sermon on the Mount a collection of Jesus' teachings that contains the beatitudes the basic values and attitudes that define a Christian life. The Lord's Prayer is said to have seven petitions. 
the prayer begins with an intimate, loving, and respectful greeting. Our Father in Heaven One, hallowed be thy name, acknowledges the goodness and holiness of God. He wants us to share His holiness. Number two, thy kingdom come, professes our belief that God created people to live in union with one another and all of the universe while on earth and after life. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, affirms that God has a plan for us and that we will be respectful and obedient to that plan that He has for His kingdom. us this day our daily bread, places our spiritual and material needs before God. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, acknowledges our error and repentance to correct the error. Lead us not into temptation. Petitions the guidance of the Holy Spirit to recognize truth in every situation so as to distinguish evil from good. Deliver us from evil. Request a sharing in the victory of Jesus over evil and death of all forms. Our church makes a difference. A part of the Our Father implores God to help us in our material and spiritual needs. In the early days of the church, we saw in the epistles how the early church leaders made sure that the needs of the poor the widows, and the children were looked after. Even now, the church continues to do so by establishing organizations like Catholic Relief Services, Catholic Charities, So Others May Eat, S-O-M-E, Boys Town, and many others. What difference does faith make in my life? In the Our Father, we ask for help in our material needs. But what we need, we sometimes confuse with what we want. The outside influences are sometimes so strong that we are drawn to desire what we actually do not need, but instead what we certainly want. This practice leads us to fall for consumerism. Consumerism is the strong promotion of products that interests potential customers to buy for their satisfaction. Consumerism leads to self-gratification, materialism, reckless spending, uncontrolled borrowing, or excessive debt. Pope John Paul II challenged the youth to avoid consumerism. The challenge is to control one's spending over what one wants and limit spending on what one needs. This requires some skill to help avoid comparison. Consumerism Skills to help avoid consumerism To answer the Pope's challenge to avoid consumerism, here are skills to help. 1. 
Be an informed customer. Have a good product knowledge and figure if it satisfies your need. 2. Respect yourself. Having brand name items are not necessary for self-esteem. 3. Analyze the advertisement. Figure out the gimmick used to induce you to buy. 4. Be a comparison shopper. Evaluate the product quality against the price and your actual need. 5. Be generous and compassionate. Hold off spending for self-gratification -gratific to help the poor.